you're enjoying these videos, subscribe. Let YouTube know that I'm doing a good job by subscribing to the channel. Plus, you'll get notified when I have new videos coming out. And finally, if you're enjoying what I'm doing, give it a like. Just click on that thumbs up, and that way YouTube knows that you like it, and they'll pass it along to other people that might enjoy my content as well. I really appreciate it. Thank you again. Let's get started. Our speaker, our next speaker has, uh, for our next speaker, she has implemented several projects funded through the Bureau of Agricultural Research. Her presentation for this afternoon is based mostly on the results of the BAR-funded project on assessment and situational studies for processing and utilization of jute. Everyone, let me hear a round of applause for our next speaker, Dr. Rebe Remedius. Abgona. Okay. Uh, okay, good afternoon po sa ating lahat. Magandang hapon po. Ah, uh, Pagkatapos pong na-discuss ang jackfruit, which is a food commodity, pumunta tayo sa goat, which is also a food commodity. Ngayon naman po ay nandito tayo sa jute. Ito po ay non-food. So, sana po, uh, yeah, yung saluyot po, ano. But, but uh, what we were going to discuss is more on jute fiber. Opo. So, uh, So first, let me introduce our agency first. Uh, the Filfida is under the Department of Agriculture, and we are involved in the production of fiber crops through research and development, uh, trade regulation, technical assistance, and also marketing and standards implementation. Uh, ang vision po namin, of course, we wanted to have a fiber crop community as good and ano, uh, successful entrepreneurs. So, next slide, please. So, you will see, this is a uh, photo of the Philippine fiber crops. You would notice, wala po dito ang jute because this is not uh, part of the efforts now of the agency. Why? Uh, this is a demand-driven crop and uh, much of the funds that are being utilized by the agency is focused on abaca and other fiber crops. But with the recent uh, request for the supply of jute, bakit po? Kasi Marami po na ngayon na nagkaka-interest for natural fibers because of its biodegradability. And isa po itong dahilan so that uh, we could take care of our nature. Uh, not only for the use of natural fibers, but also for products na paggagamitan ito. So, So, with this, uh, in the absence of the effort for the jute, we were given the marching order from the secretary to work and assess and evaluate the utilization of jute uh, for local market, socks, and other products. And that includes also evaluation of the evaluation and interview of our processors traders, and growers. At gusto po nating malaman, kailangan ba talagang magtanim ng jute? At kailangan ba nating uh, to put intervention to be able to come up with the supply of fiber so that we can use it or utilize it for our local market. And with this, we were, uh, would like to thank BAR for funding the project in 2007 and 2018. And in that, we did an assessment or evaluation of the jute utilization nationwide. So, the outline of the presentation, we will be discussing the cultivation, 
the characterization of the jute plants, culture and management, production, supply chain, the demand requirements, and the projected income. And the... Uh, okay, so with our KII, with the study, we were able to uh, observe jute plants in Nueva Ecija and somewhere in Batac, Ilocos Norte, and in Camarines Norte, and in Camarines Sur. So these uh, jute farms we documented and we interviewed the farmers who are growing the jutes and their intentions for growing the crop. The area planted to jute nowadays, uh, in 2006, meron po tayo 692 hectares before. And the area planted now, ay iilan na lang po, wala pa pong isang hektarya. Bakit po? Uh, ito pong mapapansin yung photo, this is utilized solely for the saluyot or the food crop that was mentioned earlier. And uh, bakit nawala ang jute? Kasi this is a demand-driven crop. Noong una po, nat kung natatandaan nyo, meron tayong National Grains Authority gumagamit po ng jute sa sako ng bigas, sa sako ng mga corn, at saka yung mga peanuts, yung mga grains po natin. But in 1980, nawala po yung supply uh, for that particular prod for that particular jute fiber bakit po? because NFA started utilizing plastic sacks for rice so because of the wala po tayong merkado for the jute sack nagsala na rin po yung maki industries which is the sole producer of the jute sack in Cebu so and again, along with that, nawala din po yung hectareage po natin ng jute. So, to characterize, uh, papakilala ko lang po muna kung ano yung jute plants, ano? Uh, there are two varieties, which is Corcorus capsularis at saka Corcorus olitorius. Ito po yung pinagagalingan ng fiber na ang tinatawag natin ay golden fiber. This is entirely different from abaca kasi ito po ay silky, uh, maganda yung kanyang appearance at glossy. At meron pong pinagagamitan ito uh, not only for jute sack but they are also being used for other materials like uh, paper making, lalo na po sa ibang mansa, sa India at Bangladesh. So the fibers po ay it was the if recovered, will be 1 to 4 meters long, no? And it has a diameter of 6, 17 to 20 microns. And your environmental benefits po natin dito, jute, as I mentioned, is 100% biodegradable, recyclable, and thus environment-friendly. So, a hectare of jute plants consumes about 15 tons of carbon dioxide and releases 11 tons of oxygen. Thus, cultivating jute in crop rotations, uh, crop rotations also enriches its fertility of the soil for the next crop. Kaya po, ngayon, ang clamor po ng bawat bansa is the use of natural fibers, which also includes jute. Lalong-lalo na po yung coffee and cacao natin ngayon, the importing countries are not accepting coffee and cacao that are packed in non-biodegradable materials. Requirement po nila, ang preference ay jute sacks. So, to discuss the properties of the fiber, meron po tayong uh, tensile strength. Yun po yung sinasabi natin, pinaka-importanting property ng fiber, ano, so, meron po siyang tensile strength na 11.6 at 13 point po sa uh, both Nueva Ecija and Kamsur na pinagkuha na namin ng documentation. And uh, it has a cellulose content of 65.2 kung bakit po siya magandang pwedeng gamitin sa papel. Kasi mataas po yung cellulose content niya. 
And though the tensile strength is not that high, hindi siya comparable sa abaka natin na umaabot po ng 35 to 55 kilograms per per gram meter, eh matibay din po siya kapag ito ay woven. Kaya nga po, ang jute sack natin ay isang packaging material na pwedeng gamitin for uh, products like coffee and cacao. So, in the project that was funded by BAR, uh, we did documentation and KII or the key informant interview. So, we interviewed a total of 234 respondents, 74 from those doing uh, coffee, processing, manufacturing, and trading, and 160 respondents from cacao or uh, those doing manufacturing, trading, and processing. So, we also did the, the suitability, determine the suitability of the crop to other places. So, we used the Copen Climate Classification, and we put up a criterion. First, it has to be adapted to the climate. So, based on our map, uh, we identified 27 provinces with monsoon climate. Ano po ba yun? Uh, yung sinasabi po nating monsoon climate, warm and wet. So, yun po yung gusto niyang uh, klima. And then, uh, based on the rainfall, we identified nine regions. Uh, ito po naman ay dapat meron siyang weekly rainfall of 50 to 80 millimeters. And with this, we identified the following regions also. Okay, uh, based on the type of soil, there, were, there are 77 identified provinces which are suitable for jute plantings with either clay loam, sandy loam, sandy clay loam, or a combination of the three soils. No? So, lahat ng itong parameters ay ginamit natin to come up with the suitable areas na pwede natin pagtamna ng jute. And uh, we also did uh, documentation of the culture and management of the jute plants. So, we identified the soil type with a pH level of 6 to 7, 6, 6 to 7 uh, pH. And it, should, it can tolerate soil with 1% saline content. So, the method of propagation is either seeds or apical cuttings. And also, the distance of planting, as we documented, ay, uh, and with the rate of seeding, ay 11 kilos to 15 kilos. Usually po, broadcasted po yung seed nito. And in areas such as in Nueva Ecija, na nagtatanim sila for saluyot, ang ginagamit po nila Ay, ay tinatanim po nila after planting rice. No? Kapag hindi na naka-harvest na po ng rice, magtatanim na po sila ng jute. And ang population po nila ay would relate to the number of kilos na isasabog po nila doon sa paddy, paddy area. So the climatic requirement, as we mentioned earlier, would require 23 to 25 degrees centigrade. And the planting season is April, May, and June. And uh, the rate of fertilization, 60 kilos to 80 kilos. Ito po ay adaptable for jute fiber production. Pero po pag saluyot ang ating pinag-usapan, mas kailangan pa po nila ng mataas na fertilizer. Dahil po, alam naman natin, na ay kinukuha natin dito ay yung mga shoots nila as for leafy vegetable. So, paano natin ginagawa yung fiber? So, these are the processes, yung retting po. So, sa ngayon, nire-ret pa po ang fiber in bodies of water. So, if you will see, uh, yung pong nasa right side, upper corner, ay nakalubog po ang mga jute stalks. For actually, mga 10 to 26 days po yan. And then, uh, at 30 degrees po, 
para madali siya, madali po yung decomposition niya. And maharvest yung jute niya of good quality. And the decortication method, as of now, yung decortication method is not fully utilized because there is no such machine na adaptable po sa jute. Ang meron lang po na tayo ay decorticating machine adaptable for sisal, magay, pineapple, banana, and abaca. So, right now, yung pong decorticating machine natin ay we are doing a uh, improvement to come up with a jute extracted through mechanized method. So, how it is dried, it is only done through sun or air drying. So, just like uh, other fibers, three to four hours, nadadry na po yung fibers niya. So, what are the jute fiber-based products? So, dun po sa study, nag-focus lang po kami on jute fiber, raw fiber, jute yarn and twine, jute fabric, the jute sacks, and a little of jute handicraft and accessories. But after satisfying the demand requirements of this sector, there are other possible applications of the jute fiber. This can be done first in paper making, then we can do biocomposite, we can also utilize it for nanotechnology. But at this point in time, ang napaka-importante natin unang pagtuunan ay yung makaproduce tayo ng fiber for jute sack and other packaging material. So, through the documentation and KII, we established the supply chain. So, based on the supply chain, if we will be cultivating jute, meron po tayong source ng seeds, meron areas at may farmers na nagtatanim, Mayroon pong extraction method, kaya lang ito po ay through rating. Uh, ongoing po yung atin sa mechanization and also uh, other processes that could hasten its extraction. But yung pong nakita natin dito sa supply chain, meron pong gap yung jute fabric and sack manufacturer. Yun po yung nabanggit ko na si Maki Industries before na naka-base naka sa Cebu ay tumigil na po ng pag-produce ng jute sack. And so, they sold the machinery. So, nobody is now doing jute sack processing. So, yun po yung gap na nakita natin that we need to address. And uh, the jute fabric, uh, sack importer, and retailer, available po yan. Meron pong nag import ng mga jute sacks like coffee traders and cacao traders. Most of them, uh, in Mindanao, the Nestle, Nestle Philippines, they import jute sacks for their coffee. While si Dami, Kenimer, and uh, another big cacao producer or impo imports also empty jute sacks for their produce. So, in-identify din namin, ito pong divisoria, sila din yung nagbebenta talaga ng maramihan ng jute fabric, which other small uh, users buy. And yung jute fabric and sack users, marami po ang nag-utilize nito. As per results of our KII, the Benguet uh, coffee growers, yung itatlo po yung na-interview namin, gumagamit din po sila ng jute sacks. Bukid nun, uh, 24 coffee growers. In Las Piñas, there is one coffee processor. And Isabela, Batangas, Cavite, and Aurora, and Iloilo. So, kung mapapansin ninyo, malaking problema po yung gap natin. Because the manufacturing site for the jute sack is missing. What are the advantages and disadvantages of using jute sack? So, bakit po kailangan natin ito? Mayroon po siyang specific strength. Uh, yung twined, once na-woven na siya into fabric, it is more durable compared to synthetic materials. 
it has an antimicrobial properties that controls moisture accumulation in dried beans and preventing the growth of molds. And its re reusability, kahit po gamitin natin ito for five to six times, matibay pa rin po. And then, the piling capability, uh, yung pong mga plastic sacks, uh, the, the processors and traders found it difficult to stack yung plastic side sacks kasi dumudulas po. And they prefer the use of jute sack. Ang disadvantage naman, of course, yung number one natin, the limited supply of sacks in the market. So, ano po naman nga pala ang gagamitin nila kung wala namang mabilis sa merkado. So, the jute sack, if they import it, are expensive. The price ranges from 90 or 70 to 130 pesos per piece of 60 kilogram capacity jute sack. Yun po ay sako pa lang. Wala pa pong landed price yung sa freight cost. And it is heavy according to some of the users. Kapag po nabasa, medyo mabigat na. Or kapag may laman na nag-grain, nag hirap na po silang i-transport yung jute sack. And another, it is porous. So once it, a natural fiber is porous, it absorbs liquid when not stored properly. So, yun po ang property talaga ng natural fiber. When it is humid, nag absorb siya ng moisture. But when it is dry, i release niya yung moisture niya. So, since the jute is a natural fiber, so ito po yung isang disadvantage sa kanya. But with the effort that we can do in providing intervention, we, can address, we could address these disadvantages. So, uh, based on our KII, we were able to come up with uh, we were able to come up with a five-year fiber requirement for jute products. So, out of uh, 234 respondents na nagbigay sa amin ng information on how many sacks they need uh, for the five-year period, and uh, the fabric or the yards that they need for the five-year period and the fabric or twine that they need for the fiber period were computed into jute fiber requirement. So, based on the data, we come up with the 690,834 kilos of jute fiber that we need for five-year period. And that uh, requirement would only be needing uh, 345.4 hectares lang ang, pwede, ang dapat natang tam, natin tamnan para ma-meet natin itong requirement na to. Based on the assumptions that we had, that the number of plants per hectare should be 385 uh, plant population, with a weight of 18,181.8 kilos and with a fiber recovery. Actually, yung fiber recovery po, if we do the rating, is lower. This is 5 to 6 percent only. So, 11 percent, if we could be able to attain and improve or do the mechanized thing, we can increase it into 11 percent. And based on our uh, conservative estimate, 2,000 kilos ang napuproduce per hectare of jute fiber. And meron pong conversion tayo kung ano po yung ilang pong jute fiber, yung sa jute fabric, at saka yung sa jute sack. So, please take note, 345 hectares lang po ang kailangan natin. So, with the, with the Documentation, we also did a cost and return analysis for, for uh, jute used in saluyot and jute used for fiber. So, for saluyot, uh, mapapansin ninyo, medyo ang kita po niya for the seven-month cropping na sa loob ng isang taon, kikita lang po ang farmer natin ng 14,260 
at 10 pesos per bundle. Bakit po? Medyo mataas po ang inputs niya at saka medyo mataas po ang production cost. So, yung production cost, ibig sabihin yung magbabundling, yung, yung mag-harvest po ng shoots, and the timely harvesting of shoots for saluyot. So, at the end, nag-result lang po siya ng net profit of 14,450. Ang assumption po natin dito, makakaproduce sila ng 1,200 bundles per harvest per hectare. Ito po ay base sa interview namin ng farmer sa Munoz Nueva Ecija na binibenta po niya yung mga saluyot niya sa Munoz Market. And also, two harvests per monitoring ay per month lang po ang nagagawa nila for seven months. And uh, the cost of labor and inputs po na inilagay namin dito is at present yung 2019 cost. And to compare naman po yung cost and return analysis for jute fiber production per hectare, uh, dalawa po ang variety niya, yung capsularis at saka yung olitorius. And based on our findings, mas mataas po ang resulta ng fiber production kapag olitorius. So, based on the cost and return analysis, uh, we got a total of... Uh, 93,720 uh, or 39% increase in net profit over gross income. Paano po ito? Kasi there are three uh, croppings na pwede nating gawin. So, tatlong beses tayo magtatanim ng jute plants and then we harvest it for fiber. So, the first three months, harvestable na po siya for fiber Yung one month po ay for processing. And considering yung 12-month period in a year, so meron tayong three croppings. And so with that, we're able to get 93,720 uh, yearly profit for capsularis alone. Ayaw, ayaw. And if we go to Olitorius, medyo mataas po yung kanyang fiber recovery kasi kung ang capsularis ay nakatain tayo ng 2,000 kilos lang, ang Olitorius po can reach up to 3,000 kilos. So if we will be selling it at 40 pesos per kilo, malaki po talaga yung kanya magiging net profit. So it has a yearly net profit of 210,000. Uh, base doon sa three croppings no? in a year. And it has a percentage of 56% uh, profit over gross income. Okay. So, uh, Napansin niyo na if we will be venturing on jute fiber production, medyo malaki ang kikitain natin. But of course, we need the area. We need an, a land that is adaptable or suitable to jute planting. And at the same time, yung agroclimatic condition niya. Plus the fact that there should be a facility for fiber extraction and put in place po natin yung availability of seeds na kailangan nating ipunla. Kasi every time po na mag-harvest tayo, magsasabog tanim na naman po tayo ng, 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 ng buto para sa susunod na season. So, ito po yung binabanggit ko na cost na ini-incur natin in importing jute sacks by end users per year. So, yung pong ating uh, demand requirement kanina ay 5 years. So, binroken down na lang po natin into one year requirement nila. So, on a per year basis, if uh, they will be buying imported jute sacks from Bangladesh at a cost of 70 to 100 pesos per sack, ito po ang millionist po talaga ang talagang gakailangan nila. 
uh, 10 million uh, for coffee and 8 million for cacao. Ang, in, ang Bangladesh po ang mayroong pinakamababang presyo. Kaya karamihan po sa mga imported sacks ay galing din sa Bangladesh. Hindi pa po namin in-include dito yung demand requirement for cotton. Uh, since Wilfida already revived cotton production, we will be needing additional around 50,000 sacks of cotton for three, for three year period of cotton production. So in short, we will be in dire need of jute sacks at if we will be buying and importing these jute sacks, malaki po talaga yung makos na may incur ni Leta natin at uh, mawawala sa atin sa gobyerno or sa ating mga manufacturers and processors. So in summary, uh, yung pong KII namin at saka yung documentation po namin ng, ng project on assessment of, on the utilization of jute sacks uh, for as plant, as pla, uh, packaging material, ay ito na po yung kinapture na lang namin. And this is, the jute cultivation is adaptable in several areas in the country given the agroclimatic condition and good jute cultivation for a farmer, which is three croppings, is more profitable compared to utilization of jute plants as vegetable. And mechanized extraction process should be developed to come up with high fiber recovery and good quality fiber. Nowadays, kasi nga, meron din tayong Clean Water Act, hindi rin tayo pwedeng gumamit ng most of our rivers, no? Kasi pwede tayong pagbawalan. So, kaya may limitation din yung extraction sa mga river, river waste natin. That's why the need for a mechanized uh, facility is urgent. And interventions on the manufacturing sector for jute sack making should be put in place to bridge the gap in the supply chain to meet the demand requirements. Yun pong sinasabi nating gap, uh, kung iisipin natin, malaki masyado yung ating i-invest if we will come up with the machinery. Pero ang approach po ng Filfida dito, we will make it community-based. Yun po yung titingnan natin uh, na mag magiging profitable din sa mga regional sector natin and at the same time, magkakaroon po tayo ng income generation and employment in the rural areas. So, the demand for jute fibers, socks, and other products is high considering the requirement of the end users. And to meet the demand requirements for fibers for the next five years, only 345 0.4 hectares are needed. So ito po uh, ang summary ng aming uh, resource po ng aming uh, project that was funded by the DA bar. So that's all po. Thank you very much.